I'm just gonna have to wait until somebody joins the stream. Oh, is there someone? Cheese Toast, hey. Um, is the uh, sound okay? I've got some music streaming and I want to make sure it's not too loud. Nope, that is the wrong folder. Um, that reference I want. Set pieces. I think I want to say there it is. A bit tinny. Um, I'm using my... <coughs> I may just have a tinny voice. Um, I'm using my webcams mic. Um, I could try hooking up my... Um, I've got, well, I have several other mics, actually. Um, let me let me actually scoot a little closer to the screen, see if, if that helps at all. No, actually, I can't do that, because my arm is butting up against the desk now. Uh, so, let's see, what have we got? Color 2. Okay, I just kind of crane my neck forward slightly. I, it's funny because I actually have a really expensive mic on one of those like pneumatic arms, but I don't know that it works with. I haven't actually hooked up to the new my new PC yet. Um, let me let me well. I don't know if switching the audio midstream is going to mess anything up. My uh, computer has a curiously low tolerance for the number of USB things attached to it. Oh, I forgot Sydney's glasses and that. Hey, Amy, let's. Um, you know what, as long as it's fine. It's just, it's funny that I have a <laughs> expensive USB microphone that I, I just, I never use. Because, I mean, it's not like I'm a radio bro. If, if I streamed all the time, I would definitely get it configured right. So, all right, real quick, let's do this. That's probably too wide. I'll fix that when I... <coughs> I'll fix that when I actually get the color in there. And then that's the back of her shirt, and here is... I'm uh, in Manga Studio right now, just doing some last-minute touches because uh, Psy does not have a uh, mesh to form. Psy does not have a lot of things, but it has better coloring tools, in my opinion.
Um, you know, I was trying to think of what uh, shirt she would be wearing on day two, and I, I almost went with like a Miss Marvel shirt. You know, that uh, black shirt with like a, a yellow S lightning bolt thing on it. Um, which would have been easier to draw, quite frankly, because I wouldn't have to do this bit right here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the what would Batman... I mean, that's not... I don't think that's unique to, to uh, Mr. Mr. Ninja, Jesus. Um, Dr. McNinja. Um, pencils, turn pencils off. There we go. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've seen that shirt in the wild, actually. All right, back of the shirt. Doo -doo -doo. There's the front, but hands over it. Little, little, all right. This one's super small. Um, so I was just trying to think of a variant of that. Um, and I thought this would be funny because eventually somewhere at some point, Ariana will see this shirt and be like, no, 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 no. Because obviously, obviously is not a great role model. Oops, forgot the D. That looks sloppy, but I mean, keep in mind the finished page will be that big. So, I mean, maybe somebody looking at the print version. Um, God, I don't even want to do it here. I don't even want to put the. Uh, Overlay there, let's see, W, W. I'm going to actually put a light. There we go, so I can see it. Well, there, there's there is some sort of a running joke I'm going to establish with some of the teammates trying to get with inappropriate get away with inappropriate shirts. I think mostly mostly harem actually is going to be the prime antagonist there. All right, this one I should probably actually lay it in. Uh, let's see, that's back of her, back, 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 back. Alright, that's... Alright, that's good. 
save. Let's hope this works on the stream. Well, all right, why is it not doing? try and grab the part of the screen I want here again. I'm using XSplit, which is, in some ways, it seems better than... There we go. Uh, in some ways, it seems better than... Um... Uh, Open Broadcaster, in some ways, it is... Well, I don't know. I, more complex, but obviously that comes with some problems. All right. Although Open Broadcaster was fine until it just suddenly randomly stopped working. Alright, so the way I usually color, this is the wand tool in uh, in uh, Psy. It makes stuff blue, which I've come to appreciate. I, that's way better than the marching ants as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, so the way I color is I, I tend to do... Oh, I forgot to these glasses. Alright, well, fix that eventually. Uh, is I do kind of everything, like one area of the same color. Not really of the same color, but just, I mean, just, so I'll do like flesh tones all at once. Um, the exception to that is if I have flesh tones overlapping, which happened a lot during the fight. This guy doesn't need a uh, face, by the way, because he has balloons, word balloons going over his face. Um, which is fine, because he's just a background guy. Yep. Yeah, Paint Tool Sci unfortunately does not have like a ignore one pixel gap type function like Manga Studio does, um, which is handy. But I still like the coloring tools better. I mean, it's like, well, I guess I, I don't know, I, I explained this on the last stream, which I guess I need to find the file for that and upload, uh, upload it. Um, but basically, Uh, most programs have more sophisticated tools for selecting things than uh, Psy. Oh, God, this panel. Um, but the actual selection function, the way it actually handles um, the selection itself, is um, is better in Psy, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Well, I mean, the reason is... Um, in Manga Studio, and I think Photoshop as well, uh, the selection, if you use like a blurring tool, a blending tool, or any kind of like brush that, you know, is kind of watery or whatever, it will select things, uh, it, it will blend things from outside of the selection into the selection. So if you're trying to blur stuff up against, you know, like if I started trying to blur the edge of her cheek here, um, it would actually pick up the transparent pixels behind it and wash out the the solidness of the color, but Psy doesn't do that. Yeah, 
Yeah, some people, um... I mean, some people like the lasso tool, some people like the wand tool. The lasso tool is probably, I mean, better in the sense that it doesn't allow for those little gaps that get into the corners of things. Like, if you can see, like, right there. It's got the little gap right there. If you lasso that, that stuff's all solid. You can, you can, um... Fill some of that in with a, a bit of a you expand your selection a little bit, but oh man, do these people even need to be in color? You know what? I think these people are just gonna be gray background people. Oh, there we go again. Um, because I, I know. Fred Perry, who does Gold Digger, is a lassoer. I don't think he uses the wand tool a lot. And, I mean, the, the lasso tool in Photoshop is better because it uh, lets you switch between poly, poly lasso and um, uh, regular free freehand lasso on the fly. You hold down Alt, I think it is. I haven't done it in a while. Um, but that is by far the best option. Oh man, that's so small. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do that by hand in a second. The lines aren't thick enough. If I expand the selection over that, it'll blur out of the lines. Oh, hatch. Yeah, so I have I have another layer that I, an ink layer that I do called hatch. So if we're wanding stuff, normally you want stuff and you get like that and you have to land that, one that, one that. But some of my ink details are on the hatch layer and that way, bam, everything's wanded. So if you're a lasso guy, that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. But let's see. So I think that's all the flesh. So Alt-S1 to expand. <laughs> to expand the selection by one pixel. Hide it, and then flood fill everything, and then I'm gonna do it like so. Then I deselect it. Do this real quick. Now, once I have that done, I should go probably looking around real quick to see if I have any obnoxious little gaps or things I forgot. Usually that happens by eyelashes and at the side of faces. Like there's one. Uh, yeah, one of the, um, so, uh, there's a few panels on this page that are flashback to last night. I'll try to avoid yawning into the microphone here. Seems to happen when I talk a lot. So, oh, forgot a hand.
and a neck. That looks creepy, doesn't it? Alright, so, now that I have everything uh, filled in, I hit Preserve Opacity, and that way I can just draw on the layer that's been, the part that's been filled. And I like doing it that way, because that way, now I can sub-select, you know, within the selection, which is pretty handy. Alright, so then usually what I do is... Here's my, my alternate Caucasian flesh color here, which is supposed to be kind of an olive complexion, but I'm sure a few people in this panel will have that. I don't know. Well, so here, spoiler alert, I guess, this is uh, Selena Kyle from Gotham. So I had to stick her in the back there. She's probably more Caucasian-y. Well, I mean, Caucasian is the wrong word. Um, so like Olivia, who is sort of like Mediterranean descent there, gets that. And Hero does too, because I just wanted to have a slightly different flesh color for him. Olivia. And oh, you know what? I think I'm coloring her the wrong color. She's actually. I don't know if I have. There. I think she's sort of supposed to be uh, half calf or whatever it's called. So then here is basically how I color. I uh, take my big fat pen tool and kind of cell shade everything. Usually one color at a time and since she's the only person on this page with that skin color. I'll just do her real quick. And then I take the blur tool, which is one of the big reasons I like um, Paint Tool Psy. Because the way I do it is I blur contours, but then I it lets me leave like something like this, the, the kind of hard shadow coming off of her hair. So it gives me more of a kind of a contrast in how her in, in the actual coloring itself. So it doesn't look all airbrushed. Um, I think I think people kind of over soften their colors sometimes. Plus it's just, it, it is kind of fast to do it this way. And then with the blur tool I can, you know, if I lay a color in too heavy I can fix it real quick by just kind of softening it out. And then uh, go grab the light color and I take my <clears throat> my tool which I've named Blendy which in in Psy is, it's, it's a slightly tweaked version of just the basic kind of flat brush tool that they have, which, you know, as I, when I used it, when I loaded up Psy for the first time, I was immediately impressed with like the stabilization on it. And then, and then I just airbrush this a little bit. Cheeks. And, uh, uh, So I kind of just switch between <clears throat> my uh, my blendy brush, which is it's not well named. It doesn't really blend color that well. But I just the first time I ever used Psy, I just you know you lay down some color and it's a nice solid color with just a little bit of you know the edges anti-aliased and the edges the ends here are kind of just a little bit blendy and then you throw another color on top of it 
and it kind of comes in. You can really control. And I just I I've, I like that brush a lot. I, you can probably simulate it pretty well in. Um, I haven't been able to duplicate it in Mega Studio. Um, the, it's either way too blendy or soft on the edges, or it picks up way too much uh, background color. You might be able to do it in Photoshop. You probably could, um, but I have yet to do it in Manga Studio. All right, so blend this out. This a little bit hard right there. Oh, ha, I'm on the wrong layer. Soften that up a little more. And then maybe give her a, uh, a little dip in the lip there. So let's go to Hero and the other olive complexion people. Actually, we'll start over here. Get them out of the way. Um, you know, apparently women do not... There are two things that women do not do in the Girl Power universe. One of them is carry purses, because I forget to draw them. And the other is wear eyeshadow, because I forget to add eyeshadow in. Even when I really try hard to remember, you know, uh, goth harem raccooning herself up, or uh, even Ariana at the press conference, I just I forgot to add it in so many times. I'm super, super bad about that. I don't know why. I actually spent time like learning about, you know, like watching YouTube videos. There are some really popular YouTube channels about how to put your makeup on. That's a little surprising to me. It seems like that's one of those like rituals that kids go through their uh, with their moms at some point. Unless I guess the moms are like, no, you can't wear makeup until you're 17 or whatever. But I mean, there are some YouTube channels with like so many hits about makeup tutorials. I just, it makes sense that they exist. I'm just surprised at how popular they are. Like, how hugely popular they are. But anyway, they were useful, so I learned, you know, a little bit about eyeshadow. Obviously, there's a million ways you can do it. So this is another thing where, if a character is really small on the page, like, I don't have to spend a lot of time blending it, but I kind of, I kind of can't help it. I probably should actually just leave her real basic like that. But, being able to come in there real quick with the blur tool is fine. Which she probably have a little more shadow under her chin there. And then grab the white olive. Whoops. That's way too much detail, because that's going to be <clears throat> an inch tall on the comic page. But she is bigger on the screen here. Well, that one's already colored, so. <laughs> I pulled that from a previous page, because, I mean, she's just leaning over the counter like she was on the previous page. Why redraw it? Like, Olivia here seems like, definitely seems like the kind of girl who would wear a semi shadow. Not glop it on or anything, just, you know, a little bit just to highlight stuff.
And look how good the, bl the blur tool is inside. In Photoshop, like, you almost can't even tell it's doing something. You would have to go over something 30 times to get this much blur out of it. I don't understand what it's for. I mean, I guess it's for, like, really subtle, like, photo touch-up type stuff. I mean, it's Photoshop, right? But obviously, they have um, Lightroom now for doing your photo touch-up. I just don't understand why the blur tool is so ineffective in uh, Photoshop. Uh, unless they've changed... I, well, I guess in the latest, like, CS4 or 5 or 6 or something, maybe 4, they added a new kind of paintbrush, which is way more, like, blendy. But it's still... I mean, now, yeah, I guess now you have the option to do it, but it's not like a blur tool. It's like a... Like a, I don't know, like a smudge... A smudgy tool. It, it's, a, it's a color mixing tool, which is not quite the same as... Um, not the quite the same, quite the same as a straight up blur. All right, so this guy. I only gave one person in that whole panel all of complexion, so let's go fix that. This guy looks kind of Asian, I guess. I should probably put more variety <laughs> of skin tones in there, but... I mean, they're, they're just they're background lurkers. I'm actually hoping people don't notice them right away, because I've snuck in Jonathan Katz here from... Dr. Katz, because I just finished watching, like, all 80 episodes of that on YouTube. Um, well, not really watching it so much, just kind of out of the corner of my eye. Because, man, that squiggle vision they did, that, um, that's, that's tough to look at. Even back in the day when nobody had HDTVs, that was, that was not great. But anyway, so John Katz, uh, Stephen from Stephen Universe. I've never actually watched that show, but I just I stumbled across it doing a Google image search one day. I probably should actually sit down and watch it. I, I from the art, I, I get the impression that it's maybe intended for a younger audience than me. It's not like Adventure Time where it's you know. This guy could have all of his skin too. This guy kind of looks like someone, but he's not. I just I don't know why he came out that way. Uh, no, there's nobody from the previous pages on this. I guess they're all inside the store still. I mean, it, it would make sense if some of them like followed out, followed people out, or were standing outside or something. But usually, when I'm drawing crowds, I just kind of first draft how everyone looks, which is why these faces are not super great. But it's just just supposed to be. Well, I, I actually may once I finish coloring this whole panel, like outline, like actually cut um, Sydney and Harem out. And then put like a, I don't know, a 15, 20% bluish purple gray multiply or something to kind of just make them pop out a little bit more. I, I don't know. I'll, that's, I'll just have to play with that to see if I, see if I think it's necessary. And I, I'm definitely going to do like, there's going to be a hard shadow across her face here from her hand. Because, you know, she's walking outside at noon for the first time, so she has to let her eyes adjust. So the people behind her will probably be in some sort of darker shadow. Alright, so that's that. 
Hero, I'm going to turn the hatch back on because most of his muscle details in the hatch here. I mean, it's still, I think it's just going to be a randomly overcast day, so it won't be like, I mean, it'll be kind of a hard shadow because she just has, and she has her hand right in front of her face, but, um, you know, I'm probably just going to do the, the background as, um, like the background sky is sort of a, well, like I, like I did in the previous pages where she was flying trying to find uh, the comic store, just kind of a, a grayish blur. One thing I kind of wish I had done during the whole fight scene that took place, you know, at night, in the parking lot was, you know, pull the whole palette so it's like bluer or something. Because um, it was a night scene and I didn't, I, I, I made a couple of attempts to make it, to change the way the colors looked, but I just, I couldn't keep up with it because it was an extra layer of, of stuff and I kept forgetting to do it. You know, put, put like a, more of a hot highlight on their shoulders and stuff from streetlights and moonlight and whatever. I haven't quite figured out how to do that without. I mean, you can put like a like an overlay or a hard light layer or a multiplier or something on stuff to kind of give it a bit of a to, to pull the, the palette slightly one way or the other. But I just don't think that looks great unless you're actually coloring with different colors in the first place. Or maybe I'm just too aware of like here are the regular pristine colors, and then if I slap an overlay, some kind of adjustment layer on it, it just looks muddy to me all of a sudden, which. You know, at night, color saturation drops. You know, in the dark, humans don't perceive color very well. Because um, it's the, uh, what is it, the uh, rods. Yeah, the cones over color, so the rods to kind of take over all the work, picking up the light. So you can't tell color as well. So really, you should, you know, it should be desaturated and, um, you know, tinted to slightly different color hue anyway. Yeah, but my, my technique of coloring it normal and then trying to slap an adjustment layer on it, I just, I, I didn't like the way it looked. So it's just, it's just curiously bright outside, I guess, then. Of course, even so, the moon should, you know, moon and streetlights and stuff should cast harder shadows than the sun. <laughs> yeah, drawing drawing superheroes. Honestly, that's one of the reasons I ever started going to the gym. Because I started collecting bodybuilding magazines. Um, to like get, you know, anatomy and muscle references and stuff. And then I started reading all the articles and I was like, oh, I basically know what I'm doing. I, I would just go to the gym. So in the years before I started doing the comic, I was actually quite the gym rat. But now a combination of factors, mostly the fact that I'm so busy with the comic, um, kind of keeps me out of the gym, which is unfortunate. I, I put on like 20 pounds in the last year, which is not acceptable. So I do need to figure out how to... Actually, what I need to do is make myself go to the gym in the mornings, which I am not a morning person, and which is why it's been so difficult for me to try and do that. Got to get back into my 34-inch jeans. The palms of hands are tough to color because, you know, you wanted to put some kind of darker shadow on them because they're usually on the underside, so there's not light shining directly on them, except for like, you know, 
reflected light from the ground. Um, but they're also usually lighter colored. I mean, depending on how pale... My, mine are kind of the same color, because I'm really quite a pale guy. But as soon as anybody actually picks up any color in their skin, or if they're, you know, non-Caucasian, um, I just find that kind of tricky to do. Although I suppose most Asians kind of have pale skin, unless they're, well, Japanese, Chinese, Korean probably, and then you get down into the, more into the south towards the equator, and they actually do wind up, some of them have quite dark skin. Oh, uh, to answer your uh, question, um, cheese toast. Uh, it's it's one of those weird rules in, in where anybody who's a super has a you know superhero body just automatically. I mean, if I'm writing a novel, you know, I I probably wouldn't write that because it's funny to think of like fat superheroes but I mean in most superhero comics unless your power is being fat like the blob um, everyone is like in fantastic shape but I, I, that's just because all uh, people who draw superhero comics grew up drawing superheroes who are all it's you know self-perpetuating it's the one thing they know how to draw which is why usually in most manga, it's always funny when they try to put, like, when they actually bother putting old people in. Like, there's there, there's two kinds of old people in manga. There is the shriveled prune, you know, the grandpa from Ranma who's just, like, makes Yoda look spry. And then there's the, I don't know how to draw old people, old person, like, usually the, the mother or the father. And they're, they're they look... 14, but then they have crow's feet by their by their eyes. They look exactly like the regular characters. I mean, there are, obviously there are some artists that know how to do that better. Like the guy who does, um, uh, what was it, Death Note. I thought, I think he's actually quite a good artist on top of just being, you know, just a regular manga guy. But it is funny because most, most manga artists I've noticed just have no idea, no idea how to draw anything but 14-year-olds. And honestly, 14 is a bit generous in some cases. All right, see you, cheese. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to get back in the gym on a regular basis. Well, the other factors are, you know, I'm older, you know, than I was, and I actually take blood pressure medication, which, you know, that's fine. If I take, if I, if I, uh, what happens a lot of times is if I wait too late at night, I guess the medication starts wearing off, or it's just I have a salty dinner or something, and my blood pressure kind of climbs up a little bit. So you can't really... It's hard to, like, super, like really bust your ass in the gym if you're... If you're, you know, blood, blood pressure is climbing up there. Alright, now let's switch to the... Light color. Yeah, I mean, it just it gets easier to draw what you know how to draw the more you draw it. It's pretty basic, which is why, man, I have trouble drawing fat people. <laughs> I, you know, draw, grown up drawing. 
superheroes and stuff. I just don't, uh, I never really practiced it. And originally, my very first idea for the comic was Sydney was supposed to be a little, not fat, but like, you know, a little more doughy looking. Um, you know, just whatever. 20 pounds overweight or something. And that way I could actually draw her progressing as she becomes a superhero and goes through training. Um, but I just, I couldn't do it. I, I, I realized there was no way I was going to be able to draw consistently like that. And uh, so I just decided just to make her skinny. I try. I, I definitely try to keep her waist. You know, I do occasionally draw the the, the odd waist too skinny. I think on uh, women. So I try. I, I consciously avoid doing that on Sydney. I have to go pull up an old page with uh, here on it from the fight because he had uh, his face was kind of bruised up after all the fisticuffs. Yeah, I have um. I have a big reference folder for a bunch of stuff, and I, I Google image search things all the time. Um, my wife doesn't quite have the superhero in body, body type, either. I use, um, man, I use my webcam. I have, like, my webcam folder is nothing but pictures of my hands. Holding a can of soda, holding a a phone, you know, doing the dramatic point, you know, angle, whatever. I think I've got over 80 pictures of my hands. It's to the point that I don't even, like, it's just faster to take a picture of my hands again if it's a pose that I've already used. If I need a reference. But usually the things I get I get stuck on are <coughs> shoulders and weird angles. Like if I try to draw, I think this panel here, I actually abandoned the pencils because I was trying to draw everything from a, like if, if the camera was maybe eight feet high kind of looking down. It wasn't a real high angle, but it was, it was just, ah oh man, drawing faces slightly, you know, it was like three quarter view slightly from the top. I, I couldn't do it. I had to do it straight on. I mean, I could have eventually knocked it out, but it's one of those things about doing a comic that eventually you gotta you gotta know when to just move on. Yeah, I'd love to do. I'd love to do more angles and stuff. But man, there was there was one panel on a page that was I don't know months ago during the fight. I think I was trying to draw a picture of Maxima. I think it was Maxima tilting her head. It was like if you're looking, you were straight on, and then she turned her head about forty five degrees, and then tilted it slightly away, like she was giving you a "What'd you say?" kind of look. And that just killed me. It took me three hours to do that. And I think in the end, I I couldn't. I just couldn't make it look satisfactory. So I so I just erased it and drew it from a different angle.
Yeah, the other reason I, I use the blur tool so much is even if I'm doing even if I'm doing uh, with this this kind of blendy tool or my just kind of regular marker, sometimes I'll blur the bottom of something but not the top. I mean, I'm not going to leave a shoulder like that. That's a little bit too hard, but it, it, it just let it, it lets me put down a line and then blur one side of it and not the other without having to mess with the selection tools at all. And anytime I don't have to switch tools is time saving. This is uh, this picture here is Sydney misremembering. Uh, she's embellishing the memory here, so I, I may actually I may actually go and do a layer of like <laughs> oily sweat or something on him just to make it as ridiculous as possible. Her her, her word balloon here is this is a fourth wall panel where she's. <laughs> Oops, crap. I wasn't coloring, I was erasing. <laughs> I have my swap color key right next to my choose the... <clears throat> uh, choose the uh, transparent color key. I really do. I usually just do three layers of color. I do a, a, a base medium color, then I do highlight and shadows. I should really probably get in there and do a little, something a little darker right under his right under his arms here. I don't normally because you know it's just each layer of color is more time you spend. But I mean, it should be a lot darker than that, really. But then as soon as I do that, I want to like do the whole picture with like extra layers of color and stuff. I'll just throw a little bit down here. Because otherwise I think it looks a little bit... And it kind of, kind of stands out to me a little bit too much where it's just like that one area. And I think my... Generally, I think my palette my palette is a little bit tepid. I could probably could have bit gone a bit harder on the difference between the highlights and the shadows. Oh, I need to refresh my drink. I will be right back. Yeah, I, I'd love to do deeper colors. I mean, just a, a more of a range, but you know, it just it's, it comes down to a uh, it's just time spent. 
but sometimes you kind of have to because like if I'm going to do if I'm going to make him look all sweaty and stuff you know things that are wet tend to be darker and higher contrast Ah, uh, nipples on men. Why does that happen? It is funny that uh, early TV, when men finally took their shirts off, they would actually paint the nipples so they'd be flesh colored. You can see it in like old episodes of Star Trek. Like they go to some planet and Kirk is like trying to outwit Apollo or whoever it is. And he's standing there with like his gold leaves in his hair and his shirtless. And you can tell his nipples are colored flesh color. And it's super distracting once you notice it. That's enough. All right, so I'm gonna do some highlights on him. Maybe hotter than that. In fact, maybe I won't even do bruises on him, because if this is her embellishing her memory of what happened. I mean, once I put the background in from the destroyed restaurant, it'll be obvious that this is, this is flashback. I, I, I don't know if it was Apollo. It was just, I remember there was some scene where Kirk was standing there trying to outwit a god, and I just realized his nipples were painted flesh color, and it was, it was very distracting. Alright. Yeah, that's fine. He doesn't have to look like he's been oiled, just, you know, nicely distracting looking. Alright, so now we move on. You know what? I should probably save it. Even though Psy is super stable. Can't hurt. Alright. Oh, and this guy is actually a different color. He's he is a uh, reporter reporter orange. I uh And run to the other room real quick and check on something. I'll be right back.
yeah, I've, I've developed a bit of a bad habit about saving because Manga Studio and um, Sai especially are incredibly stable. Um, to the point that I've actually lost a fair amount of work, you know, where I'm like, oh, I forgot to save, but it's okay because those programs are stable. Except, and then I just randomly, like, lose power or something. So, I actually wound up, after it happened, like, two weeks in a row, losing, like, an hour worth of work, um, I went out and bought a, uh, like, industrial-grade, uh, battery, um, UPS or whatever they're called. And since then, it's like, every time the power goes out, when I'm drawing, I'm like, yes! I mean, unless it comes right back on, I do wind up losing... Yeah, I mean, I save it right away, and then I just power everything down and wait. Oh, the one time that happened, and we were like, you know what, let's go see a movie, because <laughs> we never do that hardly anymore. I haven't had a program take down a, my computer in a long time. I haven't had a, I haven't had a blue screen of death in a while. The uh, this I'm working on a new machine now. It's a Windows 8 machine, which I I kind of regret putting Windows 8 on this thing. My previous machine was Windows 7, and uh, just whatever combination of parts I had chosen, it was it was the most stable machine I've ever built. I think. I think maybe in five or six years, however long I had it, um, it might have blue screened on me once or twice. And that was because I was doing something stupid. Now this guy isn't quite this orange. I just kind of pick these colors, and then and it's the problem when you when you're like, well, I need someone who's really tan. And you go and Google search tan people or whatever. The problem is. Every color, every picture on the line has like different white balancing. So, you pull colors out of them, it, it, uh, you gotta take that into account. So I think I, I think I pulled like reporter or something. I googled reporter and found some guy who looked like he was, you know, your typical overbronzed guy pulls some colors out of it and it winds up looking like super like pink on compared to the rest of the colors that I use so after I fill this guy in I'm gonna play with his hue a bit I'm also kind of bad about doing a lot of lighting directionality. I just kind of generally do, you know, general overhead light. I'm trying to remember that in this scene, they're standing in the store and the windows are <clears throat> over here. And to save myself having to draw anything in the parking lot, I just put like a glare on the window. So I've been trying to do a bit of directional lighting here in this scene. And I keep forgetting. Because, I mean, there's lights overhead, too. So 
washes out some of the the shadowing effect, but I do need to get better with a little bit of directional lighting just because I mean it helps learning your anatomy. If everything is lit the same way you don't, you know, have to really think about the way things join up in every direction sometimes. So quickly. Oops, nope. There. No, it doesn't quite look like a someone from the Jersey Shore. And then her. So if the windows are out there, you need to fix her face real quick. But oh, that's the wrong color. Oh, that's right. She's Mocha. There we go. And that's on the wrong side. And give her a bit more. Yeah, I mean, intentionally, intentionally dramatic lighting is fine. I've done lighting from the bottom before. Um, I just, I tend to forget to do it most of the time. Whoops. I think her eyes are like super far apart. Uh, you know what? That's probably fine. It's she, that's how she looks on the other pages. So, all right. So now we go to <laughs> Caucasian one. Then he always gets hard bang shadows. Oops. Man, speaking of people whose eyes are far apart, if you've been watching uh, Gotham, the girl who plays um, Selena Kyle on it, man, her eyes are very weirdly far apart. And you can't tell, like in this reference picture I used here, it, just because of the angle, but there are some shots of it where it's just like it, it's almost it almost looks like someone like CG'd her eyes far apart like some kind of um, 
digital Star Trek alien. Oh, and I guess women don't wear a lot of earrings either in the girl universe. Deborah has a few that I have kind of baked in and I remember to add to her each time, but I, earrings aren't that hard to remember. I just forget to put them in initially. So if they don't have them right off, then they're like, look, the crowd panel here. Well, okay, there's one girl with earrings. But I mean, it seems likely that Harem would probably wear earrings. I mean, in her in her on duty, you know, persona or whatever, the one who's wearing the uh, the military gear. Okay, maybe she wouldn't have earrings in because if she's expecting maybe she'll get into a fight, then nobody wants to be wearing earrings in a fight. But she could probably wear little studs, you know, not anything dangly. But like cowgirl here, I'm here. She would probably have earrings.
Yeah, that's true. Probably any kind of piercing is a bad idea in a fight. His face is creepy. Very occasionally I remember that the chokers are not tattoos. <laughs> Give them a little bit of a little bit of shadow on their own. Sydney has Lionel hair. You know, every time Lionel turned his head, his um, his little curly tail, or whatever, always stayed sa facing the same direction. Sydney's hair is like that. Her bangs from the front hang down in front of her eyes, but on the side, if you're looking at her from the side, they actually kind of like part backwards slightly, because otherwise they'd be covering up her eyes. I, I obviously didn't think that through when I first started drawing her. Of course, her 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 bangs weren't nearly as extreme. If you go back to like the very early pages, they were much more kind of floppy and kind of ill-defined. And I just kind of, they just kind of got more and more anime as the comic went. Now they're kind of fixed the way they are.
My cat is apparently dying for attention. What? All the attention you get. I have to color. I'm at work. With the uh, the coloring in general, you mean sandwiches? Oh, yeah, this this page. Okay, so hatch. I put um, eyeball highlights on the hatch layer too, and since I copied it from a previous previous page, and then I closed the file and saved it, I had the Mega Studio. You can tint your layer a certain color, and I do that so that I don't accidentally ink on the wrong layer. I wound up coloring it all black, so let me fix that real quick. Super weird otherwise. Right. Actually, I usually just turn the hatch off. The hatch layer off unless when I'm coloring, unless I'm doing like jeans or something, which is where most of the seams and everything go. I don't think I've done a, a sped up version of, of my uh, art. I, in fact, I'm fairly sure I have because have not because I don't know how. I don't know what uh, video program people use to to do that in. I know, like, pretty much every other artist does it, so it's probably not very hard to do.
I uh, hope I can get this. Hope I can get this the flesh tone done before my wife get home gets home. Uh, oh shoot! I need to do the highlights on Lydia here. Well, not the highlights, just the the lights. The problem with using my own hand as a reference is usually I'm drawing Sydney's hands. And Sydney is a 22 year old girl, and I am a 40 year old guy with kind of, kind of not very long fingers, honestly. Which uh, normally doesn't really matter in life, but um, it does make Sydney's hand look a little bit pudgy when I, when I use my own as a reference. It also matters when you're weightlifting, because um, <laughs> if, you, if your fingers are kind of short, you can't get it all the way around the bar, or you can't get them far enough around the bar. So I wound up having to use wrist straps to help increase my grip strength, because pretty pretty quickly when you go do bodybuilding, your the the strength of the rest of your body exceeds the strength of your grip. Good thing I wasn't doing powerlifting; I was just. Uh, I don't know if you're allowed to use straps in powerlifting. It's probably a bad idea for some exercises anyway. Oh man, this panel is going to take a while. All right, let me. I'm going to do one more thing because I'm not going to be able to stream for too too much longer. Um, normally, I just do all the shadows and then come back to all the highlights at once. So I have to again. <clears throat> the less I switch tools, the faster it is. I'm going to do the highlights for this page. Make sure I've actually blurred everything out. I don't always switch.
Oh, forgot the highlights there too. She looks super green in that picture. I'm gonna have to color balance her a little bit more. <laughs> uh, getting him back. Uh, I don't know, dude. I, you know, the sooner the better, I guess, but I, I don't really have to make a decision about it for, I mean, basically until I feel like making a decision about it. Um, and I know, I know life gets in the way, but uh, being able to get it back to me quickly would, would, would help ease my mind that, uh, you know, you can work quickly and I won't have to be stressing out about pages, you know, taking a week and a half to get back to me. I mean, I would say, you know, middle of next week, I guess? I don't know. I'm definitely going to be a little bit behind next week because Monday I'm having all of the carpet in my house replaced. Um, and the guys doing the carpet are going to move the furniture and stuff. We're paying them for that because I can't supervise that. But, well, I mean, I can't I can't do it myself, but I'll still be here and, you know, I'm sure they'll need my input on a few, a few times. So I'll be probably pretty distracted on Monday, which is when I do all of my writing and a good chunk of penciling. I haven't posted about that. I, uh, I, uh, my house kind of, it didn't really flood, but I had a water pipe break. Um, this happened, uh, God, the fight was still going on back then. It was, uh, just after Thanksgiving last year. Which <laughs> triggered a whole slew of like, all right, well, water damage, carpets are ruined. Let's uh, let's take care of a bunch of other home improvement things all at once. Ugh. So I, I need to post about that just because it's, I you know I, I generally don't use the, uh, the the blog of the comic as like sort of an agony an agony ant or whatever you call it, but it is almost like a a comedy of errors, so. It should be nice, though, because the carpet in the house, I'm not really sure how old it is, um, but it's not in great shape. Well, before the water damage, it was not in great shape. Obviously, it's in terrible shape now. <laughs> but man, the stuff we chose is, like, obscenely nice. For, I mean, you can spend an enormous amount of money on carpet. We didn't get, like, you know, cashmere carpet or anything, but compared to what we have now, it's, um... It's, it's quite plush. I'm actually worried that I'm going to turn an ankle on it because it's so thick and soft and the padding we get putting under it should be nice. But yeah, so moving all the furniture in the house, I'm gonna have to unhook my computer. We have a um, our garage is converted into a theater. They're not they're not doing anything in there because the carpeting there is the newest and there was no water damage. So I'm gonna sequester the cats in there with myself, 
and uh, I've got a little portable drawing tablet that I'll use. But man, the idea of disassembling my my main desk, I mean, I have four monitors hooked up to it. I've got the drawing monitor, my regular monitor, which is a huge one. I have an old monitor, um, an old 24 inch one that I have turned vertically for like reading comics and stuff on. And then I have a little seven inch USB monitor that I keep a bunch of like weather and CPU memory widgets on. I just, I gotta just unplug all that stuff and like, cause they don't do electronics for you. They don't want to, you know, unhook your computer and risk breaking something. They'll move furniture, but you have to do with the electronics yourself. Just, oh man. My uh, office, or den, or whatever you want to call it, is nothing but wiring. So that'll be fun. But, once that's done... Our house will be quite a bit nicer. So I'm looking forward to that at least. And enforcing a no shoes policy for the next few years. <laughs> Now, one thing I don't like is how there's kind of, I never put any detail right here in this area by the nose. I mean, normally you have, you know, the, this, this, you know, whatever it is, the, the line coming from the cheek onto the front of the mouth, but I, it's hard to add that without it, like, aging characters or making them look tired or, I don't know. I don't quite figure out how to get that just right. I mean, I guess doing it kind of like that and then subtly. But then it, I made the mistake of watching. Um, there's uh, someone on pa Patreon who's been around on uh, DeviantArt for a while called uh, Sakimi Chan. Um, and her Patreon is nuts. It's like, last time I checked, it was. She's making $16,000. Every two weeks. I didn't even know that was an option for uh, um, Patreon. I thought it was either monthly or per project, but she's got it set up for every two weeks. Um, and what she does is she paints like really, really nice um, portraits of you know. It's usually popular culture characters. A lot of Disney characters or like here's a here's a male Ariel the mermaid or um, anime characters and video game characters and stuff, but they're really, really nice paintings. Um, and she does it all in Photoshop, and I think part of the reason her Patreon is so high is because there's about 600 artists that, you know, she, she records everything she does and packages up and does tutorials, and a lot of sped-up videos and a lot of, uh, you know, like a, like one or two a month of just, like, here she's narrating over it and telling her how she, how she does it. But the point is, you know, obviously if she's doing really nice paintings, um, they don't look cartoony like the way I draw, and so she puts detail, like the little, I don't know what the, the name of it is, the, the little divot under the nose by the lip. There's detail there, there's detail all around the lips, there's, you know, it's, there's a lot more anatomical detail that you get when you're doing that kind of detail work, that kind of, um, with the painting. So I made the mistake of watching some of her, you know, she, she had some old tutorial videos on YouTube um, that she still has up. And I kind of followed that when I was doing that um, picture of Dabbler in the shower last month. But now I want to like add extra detail to all my regular drawings, which are, you know, they're intentionally cartoony because I kind of like the way it looks, and it's, you know, a speed thing for the comic. I mean, it's a comic book. It's not... I'm not... Uh, oh, what's his name? The, the guy who watercolors all the comic pages? Ross someone? Um... This is just kind of the style I want to do, but then, you know, I see other artists doing really pretty amazing work. 
you know, and I, you couldn't do a comic like that in a reasonable amount of time because it takes her, I mean, she's really quite fast. I mean, she can do a, a fantastic painting like that. Um, yeah, Alex Ross. Um, in like four to six hours. But, I mean, you couldn't do a comic like that because then, you know, each page on a comic is like five. I don't know, maybe you could. I mean, I spent enough time on this, drawing it this way. I don't know, maybe you could paint a comic like that. Of course, that's that's she's just drawing one character. I mean, as soon as you start adding characters and any kind of backgrounds and stuff, then that adds the amount of time. So uh, maybe it's not practical. I want to keep adding detail to my art. I mean, ideally, I could get to this project to the point where I have a full-time colorist so I can spend even more time. I'd love to spend twice as long on the pencils as I do. Um, I mean, that would be, that'd be great. But I think it's easy to get mired down in the details like that. I, I, I look at um, some of the artists like um, Joe Madura or just looking around on DeviantArt for like people who put up pencils, pencil work, but not like inks and stuff. I just, I love the depth and the texture of pencil work. And you lose a lot of that um, when you ink over top of it, you lose the dimensionality of it. And also, honestly, you know, the idea of having a colorist, I, I kind of resisted it for a while because there are actually a fair number of jokes in the comic that come from while I'm coloring stuff. I'm like, well, I need to put something here in the background, or I need to put, I need to fill in this little detail here, and it winds up becoming a little hidden joke on the page. But, like, this page, well, this other page here, like, basically all that was supposed to happen was Sydney here and walk out of the store. Sydney realizes she's, she doesn't know where her car is. She left it at the bank. And then she uh, takes off with harem to go find her car. But I've managed to stick in, like, like that was essentially, like, the one-sentence summary of the page. But then, so I've managed to stick in, like, three references here in the background. Um, this joke here with her you know, with a hero dancing for her wasn't in it at all. Um, this, I'll show you the balloons here. She hits a uh, billboard, which breaks it and then makes a joke there. I mean, that was all happening as I was writing the comic. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it'll be a decent page anyways without me having to, like, David Mack. I'm not, uh, I'm actually not familiar with him. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, when I started doing the comic, I was hoping that I would eventually, you know, I would get better and faster. Um, and I've gotten... I mean, my art's certainly gotten better. Um, I don't seem to be able to produce pages much faster, but the quality of the art on them is better given the same amount of time. So I guess I technically have gotten faster in a way. I'd still like to just get, like, actually faster, you know. <laughs> I'm not complaining that my the quality of my art has improved, but I would like to actually still speed up more.
Kabuki. Uh, Kabuki. I don't think I know what that is. I think I'm thinking of like she, the Kabuki looking assassin girl. All right, so, like I said, I normally do both pages all at once um, without switching colors and stuff like that, but I just wanted to show this before I have to uh, um, jump off the stream here. So the last thing I do when I'm coloring skin is I do my underlights, which has always been the same color, kind of real pale blue, Which is not how underlights work. Normally, they actually reflect whatever is you know underneath the people. Um, unfortunately, if you're using, if they're sitting in front of something red, you end up with a pink underlight, which just looks like doesn't really look like much on flesh-colored skin, uh, flesh-colored Caucasian flesh-colored. So I kind of I kind of cheat and just put the blue in most pages.
Oh yeah, I've got to remember to do harem freckles too. So I usually do that in Manga Studio because, I mean, Manga. I like there's a lot of things I like about Side, but like I said, it doesn't have a lot of um, great options when it comes to some of the some of the tools. So I made a, an airbrush and side that has a good, decent looking splatter pattern. I should show how I do some hair also before I jump off of this. Because the skin and the hair are the hardest parts. The rest of it is I, I tend not to put as much detail in like pants and shirts and stuff. Let me finish with my underlighting here. Let me do some hair real quick. Um, so since I, I work usually with um, locked layers instead of selections, I'm just going to make a new layer here. Oh, you know what? I should probably save it. I haven't done that in about an hour. Uh, new layer. I don't keep all these layers once I'm once I'm done with them. I flatten them out. But for right now, um, so real, real quick, we'll just do. That's a good one. Okay, Sydney's hair right here. And again, I, I usually select everything all at once. You know, I'll go and select all the hair and just flatten that out. Or uh, save it as a um, as its own layer with the lock transparency. But just for real quick, I'm going to show how I do Sydney's hair here. Because it's actually changed since that, that page I, I put out for the coloring. Um, uh... So then I do hard shadow. Uh, and then I have a, a brush in Paint Tool Sci that um, basically does this. It's just a round, no, stringy L. Um, so I use that for my hair now. So then I take the base color, oops, and kind of give it a little texture under here. Uh, and then I select this stuff. Make that good and uneven. Sydney is supposed to be a dirty blonde. I, I, the, the problem is the only way to make someone actually look dirty blonde is you have to actually put different colors in their hair. So she just kind of is this, I don't even know what color this is, chestnut, sort of. Kind of just a medium, just a, it's a medium brown is what it is. Kind of a rare hair color, actually. Most people are either, I mean, maybe it's a dark blonde, I don't know how you'd describe it. But yeah, she's supposed to be a dirty blonde. Uh, then I take that, 
and usually I use I, I keep it the same this uh, stringy brush texture now oh, that's too I need to separate out that out more One thing I wish uh, Psy could do, and I don't, I don't think Mega Studio can do this either. I, I might be wrong about this. I know Photoshop can. <clears throat> is I'd like if there was some sort of um, color jitter that you could set up for a brush, like a hue jitter, and that way you could have like, you know, say that it's okay for the brush to kind of like waver in its color about ten percent on either side, because I think that would make for much more realistic looking hair. I suppose I could go in with like a maybe an overlay layer or a hard light or something and and do a little little variations with the hair but again it just comes down to you know how realistic do you want it to look versus how much time do you want to spend making it look that way there's nothing wrong with the cartoony aesthetic I just you know, I'd like to find easy ways to do it. And then when I remember, which is not always, uh, once I've done all this, then I take a my regular ink brush with uh, just white and go ahead and put in some hots. I don't always remember to do that. It depends on the hair color too. Um, I don't do it on black hair usually. Well, I, I guess it depends. I, I don't do it on Hero, because um, his hair is kind of must. If I had a uh, someone who had black hair, like straight black hair, then I would probably do the hots on there. Um, but like Olivia here has kind of, you know, just generally wavy hair. So I do I do highlights, but I don't do hots on it usually. What else should I show on this stream? Uh, I'll, you know what, I'm going to do Sydney's eyes real quick too. Um, another color layer. <clears throat> I used to just do white eyes, and then I was watching um, some show, what was it? Uh, it was on like Nickelodeon or something, I think it was called Chum Chum and Fanboy. And it was a uh, 3D, you know, animated. And I, for some reason, their eyes I thought were like really weirdly gray. Um, but it, it made it so you could see the highlights on them a lot better. So, uh, so I take this medium blue here that's next to the uh, my underlight color. I do that. Uh, and then I back this off because I was a little aggressive there. Uh, 
Uh, lock that. Then take a white airbrush and just almost get rid of that entirely. Back it way off. And then take the blur tool and that kind of gives it mostly a, um, you know, kind of white, but just a, just enough color there. And then hatch. So on the hatch layer, I do, you know, take my, my trusty blend tool and add, you know, highlights and stuff on the eyes. Which looks better when the when the cornea is filled in, but that's how I do. Oh, you know what? The other thing I do on the eyes is uh, I go back in with the uh, my my fat pen tool and just draw in some. After I've after I've blurred it out, I draw in like eyelid shadow. Sometimes I'll do like a hair shadow for a Sydney like that. But not on this, not on this picture. There. And so I do the sclera. Yeah, the hair, the hair and the skin take by far the longest time. That's like it usually takes me the better part of a day coloring, getting all of the hair and skin done on a page. And then, like I said, I don't do as much detail on clothes usually. Um, So that almost everything else takes another day, and then sometimes the backgrounds will take me into a third day, So, which I'm not a fan of. I don't like doing backgrounds. So <clears throat> I'm going to call the stream there so that way I can actually upload the video and it isn't going to be seven hours long. Um, and I may, I may do a little bit of editing and cut out some of the times I walked away from the screen, but I'll see if I can figure out how to do that. I don't know. I don't have any programs that do video post-processing like that that I'm aware of. Um, but that's how I color. Just, it's arduous. Keep at it. Thanks for stopping by, guys.